Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I welcome you to Reflections, a show that asks if people can see God in your reflection and how scripture relates to us today. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, mission of the independent Catholic Church of the Americas and the Franciscans of Joy of the Gospel. I am also the chancellor of the New England Diocese of the Church, whose offices and our mission offices are located at St. Joseph Cupertino Parish, 742 Rock Street in Fall River, Massachusetts. We also have a parish down in West Warwick, Rhode Island, St. Therese Parish on West Main Street, 1500 West Main Street, and another parish, St. Augustine by the Sea, down in New London, Connecticut. We also have outreach ministries to nursing homes, hospices, hospitals, and shut-ins in Franklin, Fall River, Milford, Walpole, Seekonk, and many other towns within Massachusetts as well as Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-affirming, welcoming, old Catholic Franciscan community of the Independent Catholic Church of the Americas. We have parishes at Fall River at 742 Rock Street. St. Joseph Cupertino Parish is there. And also that is the offices of the Independent Catholic Church and the offices of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus. We also have parishes in Rehoboth, Massachusetts, Holy, Name, uh, Holy Cross Church, in St. Therese Parish in West Warwick, Rhode Island, St. Joseph of Arimathea Parish in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, and St. Augustine by the Sea Parish in New London, Connecticut. And we serve miss missions to the outreach and the homeless and nursing homes all over New England. I personally serve three nursing homes and visit shut-ins in Massachusetts, all over Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, and down into Rhode Island. Today, we are reflecting on the readings for the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. The readings are from 1 Kings 17, verses 10 through 16, Psalm 146, Hebrews, Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 24 through 28, and Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. I give you those in case you want to open up your Bibles, and that's a wonderful thing to do. Every day you should try to take some time and read passages from the Bible. Read the Psalms. The themes of the readings for this Sunday are of generosity, trust, and keeping the faith, and justice. But most of all, it's about God providing if we all we have to do is put our faith in God and our trust in God. If we do that, he will provide for us. I've found this out so many times. I, every time I'm about to say, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. Our ministry is in deep, deep trouble. We can't pay our bills. Lo and behold, the donation comes in and allows us to take care of it. God hears our call. All we have to do is have faith, have trust. For me, it's a message I need to hear. And I reflect upon often, especially in light of certain events. The first reading tells us the story of the widow in the town of Zarephath, to whom Elijah asked for some water and a bit of bread. 
The widow explained that she and her son only had a handful of flour and a tiny bit of oil to which to bake bread. And when that was gone, they would starve. Elijah promised that if she made a cake of bread and brought it to him, she and her son would have enough flour and oil forever. True to the promise of Elijah, the flour never went empty, nor the oil. That widow had trust. She believed Elijah. And Elijah was a prophet of God. And that's what we have to do so many times. We have to have faith. We have to believe. For me, it's one, the teaching is one that, though difficult often to do, I need, especially when someone I put my trust in and I thought was concerned for the best interest of God and his children, only find that they were self-serving. They were egotistical and interested in power and self-glory and wealth, money. <laughs> the gospel reading, the psalm and the letter of Hebrews all come together with one wonderful, wonderful message. Giving of ourselves for the love of God and not for our own self-interest, glory, fame, or wealth, but being a true servant of God to all those who are oppressed, rejected, and unwanted. That's the message. The Alleluia verse suggestion for this week is blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and the gospel begins with these words beware of the scribes who like to walk about in long robes to be greeted obsesquiz yeah obsesquily in the market squares and to take the front seats in the synagogue and the places of honor at banquets. These are men who swallow the property of widows while making a show of lengthy prayers. Hmm. Sound familiar? Now this was in Christ's time. But we find some of the same things happening in this time. But Christ said, the more severe will be the sentence they receive. The gospel goes on to tell of the poor widow who gave all she had, a few cents, as a donation to God, while the rich and the famous of the time made a big issue of their large donations. Christ told his apostles, I tell you solemnly, this poor widow has put more in than all who have contributed to the treasury. For they have all put in money they have left over. But she gave the little she had, put in everything she possessed, and what she had to live on, she gave it to God. What does that tell you? That's in Christ's time. We see the same today. Many of those who God has blessed with an abundance don't give quietly. No, they want to make a big deal out of it. Hey, see what I'm doing? See all the money I'm giving away? See all the money I'm giving to charity? Hey, look at me. Give without being wanting glory.
glory, wanting recognition. Give from your heart. Sadly, through time, we even have seen clergy who are seeking wealth, fame, glory, power. <laughs> I've had my I've had my experiences with a few people like this. It saddened me greatly because they were supposed to be men of God. I put my trust and faith in God. I believe, I want to believe so strongly that God will inspire people to do what is right. That he will send the Holy Spirit to inspire people, especially our government leaders, to only pass laws that are going to help people, not hurt them. That are going to provide rights justice and equality to actually do things that our Declaration of Independence says that all men are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In just eight days, on the 16th of this month, I will have completed 80 years of life. 80 years to experience ups and downs. And to looking back to realize that many times when I had the ups, I didn't thank God for them. And when I had the downs, I immediately went, God help me. And you know what? He did. He did. In those 80 years, I have had many, many ups and downs, joyful moments and sad moments. Through them all, I have been blessed because the one thing that my parents instilled within me when I was just a tiny tot and all of my relatives, especially those who were priests and nuns, instilled within me was faith and trust in God. Faith and trust in God. I thank my parents for that. I thank them today. They're there. They are up there, I know, with the saints, with Almighty God, with our Blessed Mother. They gave me a strong foundation in my faith, in my trust and belief in God. And those wonderful sisters of St. Joseph, the sisters of St. Joseph who provided my early year education, grades one through eight, and the Jesuits over at B.C. High, who in continued to instill and deepen and educate me so that I knew more about God to the point where I left in my junior year and entered the seminary. That was what sustained me, 
was my faith and trust in God. It sustained me through all the dark moments. Lately, I've had days when it's been difficult for me to do much in the way of a lot of physical work. I have some difficulty in standing any length of time or walking any distance. I have to carry a, a cane with me for security. And sometimes the pain from the stenosis becomes a little unbearable. But my faith and trust in God has allowed me to do what I do. It allows me to be able to get up and go to a nursing home and celebrate Mass for those people. It allows me to bring Eucharist to people who are shut in. And um, it allows me to come here to the TV studio and to tape this show that you're witnessing. And I'm, I'm so thankful to God because it makes me happy to do these things. <laughs> God keeps giving me just enough so I can continue. And I hope he'll continue to do this for more years. But I place my trust and my faith and my hope in God. And I trust and place my life in God's hands. Whatever God wills, I will accept. This ministry has not only been a blessing to me, but it's kept me busy. It's filled my days with wondrous things and moments. And I've seen so many wonderful testaments to God's infinite mercy and love. Recently, our parish in St. Joseph Cupertino in Fall River had a second annual retreat. And oh, it was a very moving experience. Inspirational, uplifting, and rejuvenating. And people gave testimonies of how they came to find Christ in their life and how they became aware of the infinite mercy and love of God. And it, it gave me energy and it strengthened me to continue to try to do this work as long as God will allow me to. Because every time I bring Eucharist to somebody and the smile and the joy that they seem to have in being able to receive the body and blood of Christ and the happiness. Pope Francis has taken steps to clean out the closets of clergy who do not have God's interest at their forefront. They do not have the best interest of God's children at heart. He has directed all of his clergy, including bishops and cardinals, to become true shepherds, to get out into the streets among the sheep and to get the smell of the sheep on themselves, as he did as he has, he's given the example. When he was visiting here in the United States, he got out of his Pope mobile to go and greet a child who had an illness. He went into the prisons. He went to the, he ate dinner at a shelter. That's being a true shepherd, being amongst God's children.
We need to do this. And fortunately and thankfully, all of our Franciscans of the joy of the gospel and all of our clergy in our church are actively involved in working in shelters, in food pantries, in food uh, meal, distributing meals, in soup kitchens, and collecting clothing and materials and things for the poor. We provided meals. We are now collecting food to distribute at Thanksgiving. That's what we are called to do and that's what everyone is called to do. Our faith community, the people within our faith community and our parishes are all giving of themselves so that others can be helped. That's what it's about. That's what we've been called to do. So let's go forth. Let's be faithful followers of Christ. Let us become poor in spirit. Let us truly become poor in spirit so that we can attain eternal life with God. Let's be willing to give that last penny or or that ounce of flour in the service of God for the well-being of our neighbors and those who are less fortunate than we are. My dad, and I've told you this before, but my dad had a wonderful expression. It was, I thought I was bad off because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. No matter how bad off we think we are, there is somebody out there who's worse off. So that's what we're called to do. Like the woman who gave her very last penny or the woman who gave the last flour and water to Elijah and made the bread for him in spite of the fact that's all she had. But she had faith. She trusted that what Elijah said would happen, and it did. And that's what it's about. If we have the faith, if we have trust in God, if we do what we are required and asked to do by God, He will take care of us. He will provide for us. And he will do it when we need it the most. My prayer in closing is that all who hear this message or all who read my homilies will reflect on them and go out and act on them and give of themselves for those in need. May Almighty God, through the Holy Spirit, guide us and lead us so that we truly reflect God's love, compassion, and forgiveness every single day of our lives. May God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. Until we meet again, this is Father Bob Janine, inviting you to visit our website, Mission saintsergius.org M-I-S-S-I-O-N S-T-S-E-R-G-I-U-S dot org There you will learn about our ministry. You will find links to our church website and to our Franciscan community website. And you'll also find a donation button that you can make a donation to our ministry so that we will have the resources we need to continue our work to the poor, the homeless, the nursing homes. Until we meet again, Pax e Bonum, the peace of the Lord be with you.
This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.